everybody. Thanks for watching Access Hockey MI. Today's show is not sponsored by, <laughs> but dedicated to Jeff and Jackie Fielder, who yes. gave us this lovely new bobblehead. Look, it's Bert. He's got the Calder Cup. Oh, cute. There's him before it. There's him after the Calder Cup. So, yeah. Um, the good <laughs> Shout out to the Fielders. We love you guys. You're great. That's true. Um, today we are going to talk about some new and exciting information that we have all found out as a yes. hockey community, and yes. that is that Nicholas Lidstrom is with the Red Wings again as VP of Hockey Ops. So we're going to talk about him kind of very small way, go over his career, <laughs> because he did so much. Like, like smaller than a snapshot. Yeah, a snapshot of his career, yeah. a tiny itty bitty snapshot. A blip on the radar. Yeah, so go watch his <laughs> games and go look at his stats for yourself. So yeah. we're going to talk about him today and what that means for development in the future. Everyone in the NHL is jealous of us. They imagine, should be. Imagine that, guys. Steve People are jealous of us. And Nicholas. <laughs> and Cronwall. And, and everybody all the other else. good scouts that we've got. <laughs> this is raining scouts. So let's jump to so this. And note. Cider. And Raven. <laughs> and Larkin. <laughs> we can just keep and going. And Edmondson. Watch all of our videos. We just keep and going. And all the other guys. <laughs> Be jealous. Anyways. Anyways. Sorry. So this little blip. Um, he was drafted in 1989, which I believe was the same year that Iserman was drafted. I think Iserman was 86. Okay. Was he? I'm so sorry. But let's from he was, Our years are a little off. <laughs> he Don't was come at us. 19. So he's he is the perfect human. He's He's gonna be 52 this year. He doesn't. He hasn't aged a bit. Anyway, so he joined the team in 1991, except for <laughs> being 50 something age. now instead of 19. He looks the same as he did when he was 19. But <laughs> it's science. It, it's real. <laughs> Tough question. Uh, so he joined the team in 1991. He retired in 2012. We retired his jersey in 1,564 career NHL games. Wow. NHL. Wow. He had 1,142 points. I think it's fair to note he's a defenseman. It is. That fair. is insane. Most forwards don't even reach half that. Yeah. So he's a Hall of Famer, sixth overall in defensive scoring all time, uh, seven-time Norris Trophy winner, four-time Stanley Cup winner. So Norris Trophy's like, you're the best defenseman in the world. Uh, yeah. Stanley Cup is, he's if you don't know what the winner. Stanley Cup is, I think you need to watch other videos. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might be new to hockey. We don't know. Which actually, it did start off as a bowl. It if you're new, the Stanley Cup is the highest It is the I Ching of trophies. In the NHL that you can get as yeah, a team. Yeah. And yeah. he's gotten it four times. Four times, yes. So, and then he has another host of uh, medals and things like that, that I think if you were to hang them, it would All probably take some All with the Red Wings, also. Off. Yes. Four with the Red Wings. He has never played for any other team Which after his draft. Which is just fun. So it's just, just kind like of Steve. A, yeah. Like, it's just fun. It's kind of a big deal. And if you already knew all that, great. If you didn't... Uh, we just... We wanted to bring it, and this is all already, I feel it's like a really scattered video. It's but fine. It's a gush video. <laughs> we wanted we wanted to highlight his credentials, basically. It's kind of like his resume. I mean, when a hockey player goes from being just a player to going to, like, coaching staff and, like, Steve did to GM, mm -hmm. you know, when they're scouts and everything, their playtime is kind of like their resume. It is, yeah. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's, I mean, because what else do they have besides, you know, the hockey knowledge? They have the knowledge of right. actually being... Like, knowing what it takes to be a fantastic defenseman. Yeah. And that's Nick Lindstrom. There's no so. teacher-like experience, and he's got a lot of it. Oh, that is a great line. Did you, you make that up yourself? Uh, well, I made it up now. I don't know if someone else has said wow. it. Wow. Quote Rachel. Yeah. There's no teacher-like experience. <laughs> I'm so glad. Um, one thing that's interesting is he is going to remain in Sweden, and that is going to be really beneficial for all of the Europeans mm -hmm. that we have over there, and we always have a lot. You know that we draft from the SHL like I'm it's candy. I'm to buy a jersey. I have to buy a jersey now. <laughs> we draft from the SHL, which is the Swedish Hockey League. Mm -hmm. Um like crazy and we Lately, have yeah. yeah we have the guys over there and they're developing over there before they come over here you know to start their transition to being in the Red Wings or being right. with the Red Wings so having him on site there is going to be very beneficial for <laughs> on site on the country the whole yeah, country. <laughs> on the country it's going to be very beneficial and kind of I don't know how many teams have that um that point of contact if, yeah. if you will like I don't know how many other teams have VP of hockey ops who are going to help with development actually in the European countries that right. they have developing it's a very yeah. I think it's a very niche kind of like that's super cool yeah it is super that's cool and I, I, think, I think a lot of teams if they are doing that great I you know we obviously we're just Red Wings we know? track just, the Red Wings so it's like I don't really care what Columbus is doing but I mean like if they've got people over there, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> But it is a big deal, like Janae said, and he's bringing not only 
you know, having the, the on-site, we'll, we'll stick with that, <laughs> on location, um, having that ability. But all three of his sons play in the Swedish leagues as well. So that's like inside informant information right there. Yeah. Um, and who being, knows, maybe we'll end up pulling some of them over and too. And of course, being Swedish himself, right. I think it's important that he, of course, knows the league, how it develops. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he's got an insider look yeah. at the league and the leagues over there. Because it's not just the SHL, you know, it's all there, all the subdivisions right. of the SHL. He understands the culture, what they do, how their training is. And more importantly, he's already worked with a lot of the people in the front mm-hmm. office. So, And also Draper is with the Red I totally forgot to name him in the list of people. There's too many. <laughs> um, so they should bring the excitement, back. besides all this other excitement, the excitement is, of course, the defensive development, yes. organizationally wide. So, like, the idea that he's going to be in Sweden, on mm-hmm. site there for that kind of development, for the defensive side. And Cronwall is also, mm-hmm. you know, working with development there. You've got two very good defensemen. Raising up your defensemen, like if it's just I don't know. I'm saying a lot of the same same thing. You guys know like, it's it's, you, it's very exciting. There's multiple ways you could say <laughs> that this is amazing. This is very good for development because we <laughs> well, and with and, uh, you know we're kind of going off of our notes a little bit here because it's a bit of a bunny trail, but it's a good bunny trail. Um, but he's being that close and in person with our prospect development there. That's incredibly intentional. These guys that we have drafted, that we're going to be drafting, that are still over there, we're looking at pulling them over. He's going to be working one-on-one with them in some cases and acting as a liaison for every aspect of our development, including Mm -hmm. in Grand Rapids, Detroit, the Canadian teams he even mentioned that we have guys in right now, the college teams. He is going to have his hands in everything. And to have that on tap, essentially, where these coaches can call or he can call and say, hey, so-and-so is looking good. We should be ready in a year or two. Yeah. You know, that is important information. And to it's got to be con- not a sigh of relief, but something that Eisman can just count on. Because not mm-hmm. only did they, they know each other, they played with each other mm-hmm. for years and years, won Stanley Cups together. Um, Lidstrom was a former captain of ours, just like Eisman. So we can keep, like, getting all the captains back. Like, we could get <laughs> Z, Zetterberg. if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> we could get Zetterberg back. That'd yeah. be sweet. In Grand Rapids. Uh, then one day Larkin. <gasps> yeah. I, want, I want Z in Grand Rapids. I just think that... It's kind of like if you hire your friend. Like, you already know how to work well with them. Mm -hmm. And you already know that you can trust their their decisions. You can trust. And that, I think, in a VP of Hockey Ops Mm -hmm. is very important, that you can trust their decisions. Eisenman's not going to have to babysit them. Right. Um, And I think that's very important. And he's just got the expertise, of course, of a defenseman and expertise of winning Stanley Cups, of winning the highest honors of a defenseman in the NHL. He's just, he's got the resume that speaks for itself. And all that... Packaged up to a nice little humble package of just yeah, where he just says, "Yeah, his really personality." To be back. <laughs> like, but it's the so, most unassuming, very successful yeah. hockey player there is. Probably yeah, he just seems so nice. I'm excited if he does come to Grand Rapids. <laughs> he just like, seems so nice. like Cronwall's really nice off the ice, and you just look at footage of him like nailing people, and you're like, that "Wow, Cronwell. you are so much nicer on off the ice." He's yeah, super pleasant. And but, I like looking at this because you don't even realize we grew up watching Nick yeah. Lindstrom. We didn't realize how important he was to the team, how much he produced for the fair, team. To be fair, we grew up watching it on a 13-inch TV with bunny well, ears. It saying, was hard to see him in I'm general. just saying you can forget. I yeah. love looking at the looking at the guys from, you know, when the team was in its heyday. And yeah. I think something to me is that it does speak to the culture of the team, the history of the team, yep. and just the fact that these guys want to keep coming back and they're excited to be part of the Red Wings because even if we haven't been doing well, we are still historically – awesome team that people want to be involved (laughs) in yeah and I think they see the writing on the wall where you're seeing our prospects come up we're Mm -hmm. seeing you know us doing better in games we're seeing our prospects do better and I think it makes people interested and want to be involved I think overall the the direction that Iserman has taken the team and the people he's brought on board and the prospects and everything he's done with drafting right now and front office changes um, this is obviously one of the bigger ones, but he's created that buy-in. But it's not because people are necessarily... He's not selling something that he can't fulfill. Exactly. As far as like, but he's selling the legacy, and yeah. people are buying into that, and it's so critical to have that, because if you don't have that, the team is going to flounder. And you see it this season comparatively to last season, yeah. where the team in the locker room is different. They believe in the mission of the team. They believe that they can do it, and they're bringing people in that can support that mission. Yeah. And Lindstrom is one of those guys. So going down the road with these prospects, I mean, it's mid season rankings already for this upcoming draft we've got a ton of guys developing over in Europe right now it is huge and I think you're going to see a lot of 
elite players coming out of that because they now get to pull from the wisdom of these guys where they they had the ability to put before we were you know our staff was there Mm -hmm. but it's now becoming incredibly more intentional incredibly more one-on-one and you're just going to see I think a lot of progression a lot faster than in previous years yeah which is amazing because it's already been faster than previous years so look at Bergeron I mean the kid hit the ice and he's He's incredible. He's doing very well. Yeah. I do think he needs a little more size to him, of course. Yeah, he's but a little guy, but... That all comes, and it's yeah. just been great to watch him. Um, there was one other thing I was going to say, and I <laughs> We said so remember. many things. <laughs> um, so unless I Listen remember fast. in the outro here, I guess we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um, so basically, Nick Lidstrom, and that's Lidstrom, mm-hmm. by the way, yeah. um, joined for VP of Hockey Apps for the Red Wings, and... Oh, I was going to say something about how they're, they're the original six, and yeah. like part of that, and just oh. the history. To me... That is so cool that yeah. people, like, okay, so. I, I don't know if you know that we, we love our team. It's guys. important <laughs> to note that we are still in development. Mm-hmm. Like, there are a lot of people out there being like, oh, the Red Wings can't keep they're it They're terrible. What ah. happened to them since October? Ah. Okay, yeah, they're going through ebbs and flows, and that's no doubt. But the thing that we all know is they need to be consistent, and that's mm-hmm. how you win cups. It's how you win games. That's what you do. <laughs> um, so it is important to note we are still in development. Yeah. Um, we're still working there, but we are improving year over year, and that's mm-hmm. important. So with all these changes, that's what's going to be great. You got something else? Yeah, I was going to say it's cool that Gustav uh, Lindstrom, it's his hero. He's number five. It's like, how cool is that to be I, who, a kid which one from these, Sweden growing which one up? one of these guys that we've mentioned is not... One of their heroes. Yeah, like, seriously. It's, but it's, like, <laughs> it's his. It's his number one man. He's a defenseman. He's number five. Lindstrom. Lindstrom. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, that's cool. If it were me, I would be starstruck. I know it's like business as usual yeah. for them, or they have to. But how cool is that to well, have I, come? I think they're fruition. open about it. But yeah, like, dude, you're my hero. Sign my home. <laughs> <laughs> Can you sign this, please? I'm Can you take my stick? I'm you're the best. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, it's just very exciting that he's joining the um, team, the front office. Mm-hmm. Let us know in the comments uh, your reaction, what you think, um, and who else you'd like to see join the team. That would be fantastic. Um, If you grew up watching him, we'd love to hear some of your your reminiscing. Yeah, your favorite memories. The blue Um, line shot. Hey, no one else shot from Mm -mm. the blue like he does. Beautiful. Um, Yeah, so just let us know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. We appreciate all your support and all the people that we get to meet um, when we're out at games, Mm -hmm. you know, that come up and say hi to us, that they watch our videos. It means a lot to us. It confuses us. Like, thanks for watching. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> yeah, we're very excited that people like to talk hockey with us. We are so. local legends now. Again, shout out to Jeff and Jackie Fielder, who gave us the bobblehead and mm-hmm. continual support. Um, and we will see you all next week. Bye.